Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, I am coming to you live from Johannesburg and alhamdulillah, we had a beautiful Jumu'ah. I was at the masjid known as Masjid al-Duha in Santon. And normally they call it the Coleraine Road Masjid. And alhamdulillah, it was a beautiful day. There were a lot of people and everyone was uh, you know, so happy, so excited. I was as well. The environment was absolutely beautiful. And Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for giving us this opportunity to actually uh, fulfill the Jum'ah the way it should be. And I pray that it will come by the will of Allah even uh, better than what it is right now. May Allah grant cure to, to all those who are sick and ill. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for everyone who has lost something or another through this particular time, very trying time. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Don't give up. Now, I usually have a habit of, uh, you know, looking out for youngsters and trying to give them a word of encouragement simply because leaders are those who have helped build others become leaders in their own right. So I have this habit for those young people who know me, who have interacted with me, I sometimes would just pick someone randomly from the crowd and, you know, uh, give them a bit of importance because I may have seen a sign or two that might have been apparent. Obviously, I'm no mind reader and I wouldn't know too much in terms of uh, that. But one of the young boys many years ago whom I actually met, very interesting, was uh, a young lad in Cape Town who dressed just like me and he came up to one of the talks and they said this guy mimics you. So he was quite young at the time, I think not more than 10 maybe. And subhanAllah, he did a pre-talk, you know, a talk prior to mine. And so what happened was very interesting. Uh, he delivered it, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu, Wa Salamu, Ala Al Mabuthi, Rahmatan Lil Alameen, Nabiina Muhammad, Wa Ala Ali, Wa Sahbihi, Wa Tabiina, Wa Man Tabiahum, Bi Ihsan, and Ila Yomidini, Wa Bad. You know, that long introduction I have in my Ramadan, um, in my Ramadan series. So, this young guy, his name is Muhsin Sulaiman, Muhsin Ahmed Sulaiman. And uh, mashallah, they used to call him Mini Menk when he was a kid, simply because he was quite inspired. I happened to keep that uh, contact with him. And now and again, we, I have a chance to meet him. I haven't met him in a long time, but today I met him. And uh, as would be my norm, I told him, what are you doing and so on? Why don't you join us for Jumu'ah? So mashallah, he came to the masjid for Jumu'ah. And after that, he joined me for lunch at a friend's house. And we went somewhere else and now he has come here. We're doing a live together. So I want to introduce to you a, a, a youngster whom you probably may have known if you search YouTube Mini Menk. You would find a little clip of a youngster telling you how, um, you know, to do certain things. But here is the young man. MashaAllah. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, today I am honored really to be joined and uh, to be accompanying the one and only uh, Mufti Ismail Menk. Alhamdulillah. And uh, yeah, we are live, Alhamdulillah, live streaming from two pages at the same time. Alhamdulillah. So I have a question for you, and the question is when did you start mimicking me? Subhanallah, <coughs> I think it was back in 2013. We had a, a sort of a program at our school and they asked me, what can you do? <coughs> and they was like, you must be able to do something else more. So I said, I can try to give a lecture like Mufti Mek. Lo and behold, Alhamdulillah, we got a cloak and a little a scarf. And Alhamdulillah, we went and we gave the talk. And I think it's back from 2013. Yeah. Well, you must have suffered a lot of backlash because, you know, uh, sometimes people will say, why do you want to do this and why do you want to do that? So tell us some of the negative comments you had. 
Subhanallah. To be honest, I got two, three death threats from people on my YouTube. Allah, I, Allah. Subhanallah. I got people calling me names. But the thing is, your da'wah starts. It doesn't mean you need to be a big, big sheikh to give your da'wah. And it also doesn't mean you need to stand up on the stage to give a lecture. That's not da'wah. Da'wah would show how you present yourself in front of people. Are you modest? Do you dress decently like a Muslim is supposed to be dressed? And that is a da'wah. So we had lots of negative uh, encounters. But alhamdulillah, the positive encounters are much more than the negative encounters. So mashallah, you are now in high school, right? Alhamdulillah, yeah. And uh, I pray that inshallah everything goes well. Um, you know, there is something very interesting that I also wanted to ask you. And that is, you know, when you first met me, how was your feeling? Subhanallah, I can recall it was the sixth night of the month of Ramadan 2013. My uncle said, you know, Mufti Meng, I didn't know Mufti Meng from a corner, from a corner who he was. Maybe just a, a few lectures I knew uh, Mufti. And he said, let's go to the masjid. Okay, I was like eight years old, nine years old. And I went and I had a small cloak and I said, okay, let me put it on. And I came and Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, I felt that connection when I entered into the masjid, the taraweeh, meaning the lecture was Surah to Nisa. And I think I based my first ever talk on that surah. And the first encounter was amazing, meaning the connection we felt, subhanAllah. And uh, up until now, the connection is there, alhamdulillah. Well, I'm going to tell you guys something. I need to just uh, get this thing straight, but I want to tell you guys something very interesting, okay? So, if you just want to come a little bit closer, a little bit closer, like there, okay? You can just come this way here, a little bit closer, a little bit more. You can put your face a little bit closer to mine, okay? So, what he did is, in his first lecture, you guys can go and listen to it, where it says, Mini Menk. Um, he said, he was speaking about Surah Tun Nisa, and he was saying, you must pamper your women, you know, when you get married in the weekend, don't burden your wife with a lot of work. You know, you, on the weekend, you must take her to the spa and you must, uh, uh, you know, perhaps you must bring her breakfast in bed, take her to the spa, let her enjoy and let her, you know, unwind, pamper herself and whatever else it was. And subhanAllah, I was teasing him. Yeah, uh, was it today? or yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, And I was teasing him to tell him, now you're much older, you're going to need a lot of money because when you get married, your wife is going to tell you, you said every Saturday, every weekend or whatever, you know, uh, send the women to the spa and you make sure that they pamper themselves and, you know, bring them breakfast in bed and so on. So how do you feel now that you're a little bit older about those comments? Do you still feel the same or do you think you've changed or uh, let's see how you're going to navigate through that question? SubhanAllah, I have answered, you no. Know, Shaykhana, they took it wrong. I wasn't meaning the spa where they give you massages. I was thinking about the quick spa. They cannot send them every day to go buy the groceries. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's changing his tune. You see, this is typical of... And this is what the, the women, they say that the men are typical. No matter what, they still hold us in that particular stereotype, you know. So, so now you're changing your tune. Let's be honest. When you said spa in your speech, when you were much younger, what were you referring to? Let's I, be honest. I was talking about the spa where they make, take your wife for a massage. And okay. I'll stick to it, inshallah. Okay. Perhaps stick not to it. every day, maybe once, uh, inshallah, in a blue moon, once a month, inshallah. You know, when we say once in a blue moon, a blue moon never comes. Have you guys ever seen a blue moon out there? So, mashallah. I told him you better earn, you better earn a lot of money because whoever you're going to marry, subhanAllah, that person's going to have to, going to hold against you your lectures and bring that lecture to say, you said, and I still remember the young guy, he was wearing a red scarf and saying, and we were all sitting in the masjid and he says, every now and again, you must take it to the spa and you must, you know, spoil her, bring her breakfast in bed. And I was like, what is this youngster saying? The old masjid started laughing because they knew, young man, you, when you get married, you're going to change your tune, you know. He's, he's only 16, I think, and he's, he's already changing his tune. Imagine what's going to be happening. But anyway, that, that, that was just on the lighter note. I always want to know, and I'm going to ask you this question 10 years from now when you're married, and we'll see, may Allah make it easy for all of us to respect our women. Well, what I learned from that is... Uh, the lecture that I delivered regarding the respect of women really drove home, even with little children. He was, how old were you at the time? Eight years old, yeah. Eight years old? No, when you delivered that lecture. The lecture was about nine years old. Nine, ten years nine, old. Nine, ten, yeah. I remember ten. 
Yeah. So subhanallah, so at a 10 year old understood the message. And that to me was a very great, you know, uh, consolation to say, mashallah, mashallah, at least he understood the message and it went well for, for that. So if you guys want to give him a follow on Instagram, what's your handle? Official M-A-S, official dot M-A-S uh, on Instagram and on YouTube. I also got official dot M dot A dot S. Uh, yeah, inshallah. So on Instagram, it's official dot M. I think it's dot A dot S. It will come up inshallah. I can't <clears throat> Okay, mashallah, yeah. mashallah. I think I will put it down here a little bit later. So there is, uh, there, there are some people comments, uh, some people's comments, you know, telling us um, certain things. People are so ha happy. Uh, I'm sure you can read that saying, mashallah, tabarakallah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a good thing. Subhanallah, rabbil alameen. Someone is saying, I was just asking. I didn't see the question. I'm so sorry. But anyway. My brothers and sisters, I thought we'd just come on a little live to uh, perhaps uh, catch up with uh, young, you know, Muhsin Ahmed Suleiman. And Alhamdulillah, right now he has completed his hif. He's uh, part-time, like, helping out with the imama, uh, being an imam at, at a masjid in Cape Town. He's from Cape Town. He lives in Cape Town. And Alhamdulillah, I, I, I pray that all our children and him as well and everyone else uh, does well in, in this world and the next. And, uh, you know, just for the record, we don't have, we're not related except by uh, the deen, by being part of the Ummah family. But uh, Alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. And may Allah bless all of you guys. If anyone wants to ask a question, we'll just wait here for yeah, a few. Um, someone is asking me, when am I coming to Cape Town? Well, I'm not too sure. I was thinking I might have come to Cape Town next week, but I'm quite... You know, I, I'm quite sad to say that that's not really going to happen. Uh, but who knows? I, will, I may announce it. One of the reasons why I'm not announcing too much is because we have to avoid a large crowds in this situation. And therefore, because it's limited, what's the point of so many people coming and going back? You'd rather watch it online, inshallah. So there goes, guys. Uh, lovely to have uh, been with you guys here from Johannesburg. And until we meet again, aqulu qawli hadha. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ما شاء الله بسم الله